Well, you are not shy at all about jumping into roles, playing real people, mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, Chris Gardner, yeah. and now this one, The Good Doctor. Mm -hmm. Is there a special formula for playing a real person, or does each require a unique approach? You know, it's really interesting, and the, the beauty of my job is a character or a, a, a real person, is, is, it's very similar. You know, it comes down to uh, a, a basic comprehension of the psychology, and I usually start with what a person wants. You know, everybody is driving for something, and uh, the, the system of wants is very powerful. And with, with uh, Dr. Omalu, when I landed on his deepest want was to be accepted as an American, that was huge. It opened up everything in his, into his psyche. Heaven was here, and America was here. You could be anything, you could do anything. I am the wrong person to have discovered this. If you don't speak for them, who will? Wow, you say that, and so I'm wondering, because I'm cheering in the movie for his truth to come out and, mm -hmm. and keep pursuing it, and yet his deepest want is to be accepted. Those mm -hmm. were such conflicting Absolutely. agendas. How did, he per how did he push through? Did he tell you what kept him going? He is, um, he's, he has eight degrees, mm -hmm. you know, so he is, a, he is a man of science, but he is also uh, profoundly a man of God. He's one of the most religious people I, I've ever met. So he, he found himself uh, reconciling those two things around the concept of truth, that science is looking for the truth and religion is looking for the truth. So this became something that all of the parts of him were in sync with, that we have to tell the truth and we have to know the truth. And his faith really carried him through this, uh, the, the process of the, you know, almost uh, biblical proportions that of, of resistance he experienced. I see. Now, I do know that you're an Eagles fan. That's yeah, what I've heard. absolutely. And so I'm guessing that in your time, you've come across some different players, coaches, maybe you've become friends with some, I don't know, but mm -hmm. have you gotten any feedback from them, whether they've seen it or heard about it? Right. Uh, not, not specifically from from the the Eagles, but we, we've had, uh, screenings for for players, um, and you know there, it's been a it's been a good reaction. There there was a there was one quote from from a player that uh, you know he said this is like a horror movie to us, mm -hmm. you know, and that was that was sort of a new um, you know, pr perspective on it. I found a disease that no one has ever seen. <laughs> Repetitive head trauma chokes the brain. The NFL does not want to talk to you. You turned on the lights and gave their biggest boogeyman a name. You're going to war with a corporation that owns a day of the week. No proof was presented today because there simply isn't any. They have to listen to us. This is bigger than they are. But, you know, for me, my, my hope is that in the, the delivery of this this, this film and packaged in an inspirational story about a, a man. I think that the delivery of the information I'm hoping will ultimately be better for the players and, and for the NFL and for parents and it will help to propel the game forward. It was addressed in the movie, The Beauty of the Game. And so, of course, uh, as you mentioned, I, I want to talk our, our local angle a little bit. With you being an Eagles fan, mm -hmm. us Bucks fan, we really view you as nemesis, even right. though, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're not in the same division. Right, Is right, it reciprocated? Right. Do you feel the same way about Bucks? Uh, uh, no, no, not, not, not at all. I, I grew up in, in Philadelphia, and all, all of my uh, sporting pain was almost exclusively centered on the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time.